this is the interesting thing about you. Um, is it your curiosity that kind of leads you into all of these friendships that seem to be outrageous? I'll just yeah. you Google Marty Smith. A story that'll pop up is you swimming at Nick Saban's house. All right. A story that'll pop up is you hanging out with Ric Flair. A story that'll pop up is that you're friends with Tim Tebow, basically. A story that'll... These stories are outlandish. And then you hear about the stories in the book. It's just like, I think that's just you. Your curiosity kind of leads you into these situations where, because you're such an incredible dude, you win people over quick because you're genuine and you're awesome. And then you build these friendships that are just next level. And I think you help out them more than they help out you. I think that is something that I got away from the book, that I got out of the book. That's extremely kind. Thank you. I do take it very seriously. I enjoy more than anything else in this job having the opportunity to strip some veneers, having the opportunity to show you a level of depth or vulnerability about someone that you may not have known before. And I also love the opportunity for them to feel fulfilled by whatever that is, whether that's some of the stories in the book are, um, you know, Tim, you said Tim Tebow. He's such an inspirational person to me and the impact he's had on my life is insane. That's in there. Michael Vick, all right? I grew up 20 miles west of Virginia Tech. That dude's the greatest Hokie of all time. He rewrote football. And then he, the dogfighting thing happened. And he went to prison for 23 months. And during his stay in prison, he did not run or play basketball or lift weights to satiate his competitive drive. He learned how to play chess. It became his passion. And I got the opportunity to go to Hollywood, Florida, Florida and sit on a beach with Michael Vick and play chess against Michael Vick and learn what it was like in that prison. Who won? And um, he beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, man, I'm a nerd, dude. I was on the Giles High School chess team back in the mid-90s, I, or excuse me, early 90s. I, I, uh, I felt like I was a pretty good chess player, man. So I had strategy down. Michael Vick mopped the floor with me, dude. <laughs> well, football for him was not a lot of game playing. It was literally chess. It was He was the queen, too. He could find go wherever he wanted. So that's how he played chess. Like, all right, this, was, so this is me. That's what he's – when he learned how to play chess, they were literally explaining to him, and somebody was like, all right, the queen, that's you. Go right, go right, like you this pawn is offensive lineman right here. And he's just – he's literally just slicing and dicing humans on chess. Yes. That would be incredible. I, I, he captivates me so much because of what he was as a, as a player, uh, how his mistakes, how he had to pay for those mistakes and what in the after, the, the person he is in the aftermath of those mistakes. And all of that is in this book, Brandon Marshall. I, did, I don't know if, if, if you met Brandon. Um, just an unbelievable human being, but he had to learn who he was. He had to go to an outpatient program at McLean Hospital and learn that he had borderline personality disorder. So you, it seems as if, and by the way, he's done a lot of great work for uh, mental health and everything like he's that. the man. Yes. You love a good redemption story. I do, more than you could ever imagine. I appreciate, I appreciate people who are... Are own, take ownership of things they had to fix. They fixed them. And then not only did they improve their own lives, they made the decision to improve more. That's awesome. And that's what Brandon's doing. That's what Michael's doing. And Ryan Leaf. That's what, I mean, like, I, I, I could go on and on. But those are just a couple of the stories in there that I had the great opportunity to tell. And I, here, here's kind of the bottom line on this book brother i consider us all to be pieces of clay okay and every acquaintance in your life every relationship in your life every triumph every failure every crushing blow every euphoric moment of joy pinch at that clay some of those moments may just take a little tiny bit some may just rip out a whole rib but what they all do is they reshape the person that you are and who you're going to be moving forward. My, my new relationship with you is very inspiring to me because of what I said earlier. You don't give a shit <laughs> about what someone else may perceive. You are you. And I've only met a select handful of human beings that are that self-confident. 
I believe that self-confidence and humility walk hand in hand. I think that insecurity and cockiness walk hand in hand. Oh, shit. That's a really good and quote, by the way. I think you're right, too. That's the way I've, I, that's what I've experienced in my life. And I just got the great opportunity to share some of these stories in that, in a book that, that my publisher believed, so many people believed in me, and I, I just hope it impacts one or two lives in a positive way. Okay. And uh, listen, we've only read a couple chapters, and we had people crying, and we had people determined to do things. I mean, it's a great. Hey, you got a really good book here, and and Thank I'm you. looking at the front of it, Eric Church. Incredible ever, move. Ever heard of him? Wrote the <laughs> foreword for this guy. <laughs> Tyler my best friend, man. <laughs> best friend. It's your best friend. He's my best friend. Yeah. I like that he always wears glasses. It makes me think he's either high or drunk all the time, and I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, um, there are very few people in my life who have inspired me to the degree he has. And the story that he wrote in the forward of the book meant more to me than I could ever articulate. It made me belly laugh and it made me ugly cry because it encapsulates our friendship more beautifully than I think I ever could. He and I have experienced the most euphoric of highs and we have experienced the most guttural, crushing lows together. And we have walked through that hell together. And I adore him. That's I, awesome. I, I do. He is a very, very special human being. Talented guy, too, just like you. I assume that's why you guys hang out. But with that being said, speaking of talent... The Eric Church thing is very awesome. I mean, that's a... <laughs> that's a is that a power move, fellas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, forward by Eric Church. But what I was going to say is there's no other names on this book other than Marty Smith and Eric Church. You actually wrote this thing. It's not like Every you had a... Every single word. So you didn't have a... Now, listen. No. This is something people have pitched me books a lot. They're like, this is what will happen. We'll come in. We'll sit down. I'll interview for like three, four hours. I'll go write a part. I'll come back another three, four hours. I'll write a part another three, four hours. Then you have to read through the whole thing and correct my mistakes. I was like, I'd rather just write it my fucking self than do what you just said. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> but they, but that's how it, like four different people would pitch me that, right? Four different authors. And I think that's how most people do their books. Here, you wrote this book, word, every single yeah. word. That's awesome. That is absolutely I incredible. Was, how was that process? Thank you. Uh, it was, <clears throat> it was liberating. I am a writer by trade. That's what I studied in college. It was my profession for seven, the first seven years of my career, professional career, before I fell into television. And so uh, the very first day I sat across from my publisher, 12 books out of New York City, they broached that. Who do you think might you might want to write this book? And yep. I looked over at my agent, and I'm like, what, what is he talking about? <laughs> I'm, I'm writing this damn thing. <laughs> and... Fortunately, uh, Dave Larabelle, who is the book agent for CAA, who helped me put this together, he looked at, at Sean Desmond, the publisher, and said, line by line, this guy's as good as you'll read. And uh, that was a great endorsement by Dave. So I went to work, and I was just stupid enough to think I could write it during football season. I like to be a <laughs> present father. I like to be a present husband. I like to be immersed in my family's day-to-day. -day. But... So I thought, okay, airports and hotel rooms, I won't have that distraction. Easy. I'll be a, the last damn thing you want to do after a <laughs> college football game is go write a book. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, gentlemen, uh, I managed to pull it off. I, in fact, I left the national championship game in Santa Clara, California, the morning of January 8, 2019, flew home, kissed my family, got back on another airplane and flew to Manhattan and holed myself up in the publisher's office for six days so that I could finish it on deadline. Jeez. And it's here, here's the thing about hold writing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You hold yourself up in there, okay? I'm imagining a beautiful mind where there's just like... <laughs> it's like Giving me too much damn credit. <laughs> no, but I'm thinking there's like trash on the floor, scribble it up, do it again, like pieces of paper like thrown down. I'm thinking like there's maybe some empty drinks around. It's just like you're like locked in like a mad scientist, like not going to leave until this thing's done. Is that accurate? 
Uh, yes, to a degree it is. That's it, uh, hilarious. Yeah, I will say to you, the creative process is an interesting one. Some people will go to their cabin to write their record. Some people will go to... I'm fascinated by songwriters. Me too. Um, I, um, I actually have a song that I wrote in those pages. Right in because, here. Yeah, right in those pages. All it's right. called Out Like That. And it actually was... I was inspired by... Remember when Marcel Darius blew up Colt McCoy in the 2009 National Champ- BCS National Championship yep. game? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He had like a numb thing happen to him. Like yes. A, yeah. It was inspired by that moment. Really? The song was, yeah. How does that work out? What do you mean? Because I just, I I was texting with Eric, actually, and I said, hey, man, you ain't supposed to go out like that. And he's like, dude, that's a song. And so I just started kind of putting thought processes together. And all of these people who did not go out the way they should have, Jesse James deserved to face that gun. Number three deserved one more race won. Those towers in New York deserve to stand. Lane Frost deserved one last go. Cobain deserved one last show. I deserved one last day with my old man. It's got chills. Read it. It's all in there. That number three line. Hey, I got a little choked up in there, man. 